Shields are a great way to connect external components to your microcontrollers. A shield allows you to connect detailed circuits directly to the board with a set of header pins. This minimizes the amount of space that the parts take up, and it cuts down on the number of loose wires. In this project, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to make your own custom shields for your microcontroller. To get started, the first thing that you need is a circuit board. I prefer using pieces of perf board because it lets you make all the connections by hand. Next you need a set of header pins. The two most common types are male breakaway header pins and stacking header pins. The only real difference is that the stacking header pins have a female connector on top that lets you stack multiple shields on top of each other. The most basic kind of shield that you can make is a proto shield. This is essentially a plain circuit board with a set of attached header pins. You just need to make one small modification to the header pin so that you can mount the shield onto an Arduino. Most of the pinholes on the Arduino have the standard 0.1 inch spacing. However, this is not true of the gap between pins 7 and 8. This spacing is slightly smaller. So to be able to make the pins line up with both the Arduino and the circuit board, you need to bend the pins a little to one side. Then, insert the header pins into the Arduino and fit the circuit board on top. You can then solder the header pins to the circuit board. This gives you a basic proto shield. This is a versatile platform that you can use to build any kind of shield that you want. Here's a few simple examples. To create a relay shield, all you have to do is start with a proto shield and build a basic relay circuit on top of it. Start by connecting the coil of a 5 volt relay between the 5 volt pin and the collector of an NPN transistor. The emitter of the transistor is connected to ground, and the base is connected to a digital pin through a 1K resistor. A diode is attached across the coil of the relay to protect against voltage spikes when the relay turns off. Optionally, you can also add an LED in parallel with the relay coil to act as a visual indicator of when the relay is on. Lastly, the switching terminals of the relay were connected to a pair of screw terminals. This lets you make temporary connections to the relay as needed. And now you have a simple relay shield. You can easily repeat this design to set up as many relays as you want. Just be sure to stay below all the power limits of the board. As another example, here's how to create a servo shield. Starting with a basic proto shield, all you have to add is some simple header pin connectors, jumper wires, and a power supply. First, solder a battery connector to the VN pin and a ground pin on the board. This will let you power both the board and the servos with a battery pack. Before you can connect the servos, you need to first identify each of the connector wires. In all cases, there will be one positive wire, one negative wire, and one signal wire, but the colors vary depending on brand. To attach them to the board, we're going to use a set of three header pins for each servo. Solder these to the board just below the digital pins. The top pin of each set will be for the signal wire and will be connected to the adjacent digital pin. The pin that corresponds to the positive wire will be connected to the VN pin on the board, and the pin that corresponds to the negative wire will be connected to ground on the board. This gives you a basic servo shield. You can use this design to control as many servos as you have digital pins. As one last example, here's how to make a motor speed controller shield. The simplest kind of speed controller uses a pulse width modulation signal to set the speed of the motor. This signal can be generated by any of the pulse width modulation pins on an Arduino. Unfortunately, the digital pins have a max output of 40 milliamps, and this isn't enough to power most motors. So, we need to use an external power source and a transistor switching circuit. This is similar to the transistor circuit that we used for the relay shield, but with two changes. Here, we're powering everything from the battery pack connected to the VN pin and ground. I also replaced the small signal transistor with a power transistor for a higher current capacity. Again, I included an LED for a visual indication of the output. Now you have a simple motor controller shield. You can set the speed of the motor by sending an analog write command to the base of the transistor. Well, there are a few examples that show just how easy it is to make your own custom shields. Thanks for watching, and check back next week for more DIY hacks and how-tos.